Mattel's Masters of the Universe toy line launched in 1982, introducing the world to He-Man, Skeletor, and a whole cast of colorful and creative characters. The line would go on to be one of the most successful toy lines of the 1980s, giving us several memorable action figures along the way. Mattel was able to keep costs down by reusing parts between figures. It wasn't an uncommon practice to see the same arms, legs, weapons, and torsos reused in different colors to create different characters. Aside from this, Mattel also kicked off the line by reusing molds that they already had from some of their existing toy lines. We're going to take a look at the origins of some of our favorite Masters of the Universe action figures, and along the way, we'll discover the lost figure that was never released. Today on Toy Explosion. It's Big Jim's Rescue Rig, and you can buy Big Jim with a stocking field radio. Big Jim was on patrol when the rock slide shook, so he tells his men, I'm going in for a look. Then the mountain trembled suddenly, and Big Jim gets trapped by a big old tree. We need the rescue boat. The crew calls out to Jim, and working very eagerly, they haul him safely in. Big Jim Rescue Rig comes with its own talking unit. Big Jim with talking field radio sold separately from Mattel. Big Jim was a popular line of action figures released by Mattel from 1972 all the way through 1986. Obviously inspired by Hasbro's G.I. Joe, Big Jim stood around 10 inches tall and focused less on military theming and instead focused more on playsets and outfits that saw Big Jim and his friends going out hunting, camping, fishing, and even some space exploration. When the time came for Mattel to develop their new line of fantasy action figures known as Masters of the Universe, they borrowed a few concepts and existing parts from their popular Big Jim toy line. A fantastic example of this is the whip that is included with Beast Man. Have you ever wondered why the handle seemed a little too big for the figure? The only way he can hold it is by gripping the hand guard. Well, that's because this accessory originally came with a Big Jim action figure known as the Whip. <laughs> Since the Big Jim toy line was in the 10 inch scale, the accessory was obviously a bit oversized for the five and a half inch Masters of the Universe action figures. But that didn't stop Mattel from using this and several other parts in the line, including some of their creatures. He-Man's now iconic steed Battle Cat originated from this earlier Mattel toy line. From the Big Jim set on the Tiger Trail released in 1976, we got that familiar unarticulated cat action figure. This one painted to look more like a common tiger. A few years later, it reappeared in Mattel's released Tarzan toy line as a Black Panther. When brought over to the Masters of the Universe line, the cat was, of course, far too big in comparison to the action figures. But the folks over at Mattel just used the excuse that, hey, this is a fantasy world. Why can't the cats be oversized? So armor was developed for this new green and yellow tiger to allow He-Man to mount him. The cat was now a steed, and would of course go on to be one of the more iconic additions to He-Man's character. The same mold was of course used again to create a steed for Skeletor, the Purple Flocked Panthor. In 1972, the Big Jim line then gave us the Eagle of Danger Peak playset. This gave us a new Eagle figure, which came out again a couple years later as part of the Big Jim Eagle Ranger set. These new Eagle action figures had an action feature where pressing the button on the back of his leg would trigger a wing flapping motion. The Ranger set even included an arm perch so that the Eagle could sit on the arm of your Big Jim action figure. A whole decade later, this same design was reworked for Masters of the Universe into the bright orange and blue Falcon known as Zoar which of course would later go on to be known as the Sorceress of Castle Grayskull in her Falcon form. 
Just like with Battle Cat, there was also an evil version created, the Purple Screech. So as you can see, several figures and ideas were reused and reintroduced to a new generation of kids as completely new characters. But as is common with the production of anything, some concepts never quite made it past the initial prototype stages. In 2005, former Mattel employee Roger Sweet released a book titled Mastering the Universe, He-Man and the Rise and Fall of a Billion Dollar Idea. Roger was involved with the creative process alongside other talented individuals such as Mark Taylor, Ted Mayer, and several others. There's obviously a whole lot more to that story, but that's not the focus of this particular video. In this book, Roger Sweet mentions a character that, as far as I can tell, the public learned about for the very first time, Gygor. Following suit, Mattel had plans to reuse another creature from the Big Jim toy line. 1973's Jungle Adventure playset introduced a gorilla action figure. Turning the dial on the gorilla's back would cause the gorilla's arms to flail around. Much like the Big Jim Tiger, the gorilla saw another release in 1978 as part of Mattel's aforementioned Tarzan line. And this gorilla almost saw another release in 1982 as part of Mattel's new Masters of the Universe line. Roger Sweet in his book said, I changed the ape's body color from black to bright yellow and gave him a dark olive green face and chest. His face is contorted with white teeth snarling and an open mouth of blood red. I gave him a black body harness. From his shoulders I hung a dark maroon cape when I showed Gygor to marketing's Mark Ellis, he said, that's bleeping great. Ted Mayer in my design group created a striking full color illustration of the beast with He-Man mounted on his back. Gygor was decked out with a panoply of harnesses and weapons. When this book first came out and this information came to light, fans immediately wanted to know more. There were debates on if this was even real or not. But thanks to fans dedicated to preserving this history, such as the Power and Honor Foundation, the original prototype photos and concept sketches that Roger mentioned in his book eventually surfaced. The Big Jim Gorilla was colored a bright yellow and green and outfitted with a maroon cloth cape and some black armor to make him fit in with that fantasy barbarian-like world of Masters of the Universe. In addition to that prototype, there was another design. The concept artwork by Ted Mayer that Roger mentions shows Gygor with a red color scheme instead and features that harness on his back and large blasters on his shoulders, effectively making him another mount for He-Man. This shows that there were a few differing ideas for the character as he was going through development. Interestingly, Mark Taylor was also using the Big Jim Gorilla as the base for a character completely unrelated to Gygor. Mark's early concept art for Beast Man clearly shows inspiration taken from that original 1972 action figure, which would have resulted in a much different look for the Beast Man character. Ultimately, this was scrapped and the Beast Man we ended up getting was scaled down to the same five and a half inch size as the rest of the figures in the line. Featuring newly sculpted parts, well, except for that Big Jim whip that I mentioned earlier. And Gygor never saw release, at least not in the vintage toy line. In 2010, Mattel introduced Gygor into their Masters of the Universe Classics collector line. They opted to follow the design of the original concept photographs, giving Gygor that bright yellow and green skin colors, black armor, and a red cape. No longer was the evil fighting gorilla just an unproduced concept. He was now a canonical character with a true action figure release. Finally getting Gygor in classics was pretty awesome, but I have always been fascinated by the idea of this character existing in that original toy line. I've often wondered how he would look alongside He-Man and Skeletor on my toy shelf. So in order to make vintage Gygor a reality, I commissioned toy designer Joe Amaro to bring the original concept to life. 
I've long been a fan of Joe's work. He's been in the toy industry for many years and chances are pretty good that you have something in your toy collection that Joe might have worked on. I had him use that Big Jim Gorilla as a base just like Mattel was planning to. And here he is following the colors and design of the prototype scene in those original photos, this is what the actual Gigor figure might have looked like if he was made into production. It's really interesting seeing him standing alongside our favorite original figures, and he certainly seems a bit out of place if I'm being honest. But if this figure had actually come out in the 1980s alongside these others, would we even think any differently about him today? On the surface, reusing parts may seem a tad lazy, but it's a pretty common practice in the toy world. Keeping costs down while taking a gamble on a new IP like Masters of the Universe ended up working out for them in the long run. Once the line found success, they were allowed to create many more imaginative characters, vehicles, and playsets. Gigor never made it past the stage of being an idea, a concept. He was never introduced to children and thus never had the chance to spark a nostalgic connection for fans of the franchise. Instead, he was given a different path. He became the lost figure from the early Masters of the Universe toy line. He went from legend to reality, finally being brought to life as a true official character with the release of his 2010 action figure. Gigor lives. Hey guys, thank you so very much for joining me for another episode of Toy Explosion. I know that there has been a terrible gap in episode releases and videos in general, so I just really appreciate all of your support and we're gonna get things rolling again. I, I know I, I say that every time I do one of these things, but I hope you guys are all staying safe in these very weird times we're living in right now. I once again have to give a very special thanks to the sponsor of this episode over at Megalopolis. Uh, if you guys are in the mood to do some toy shopping, please check them out. Also, massive, massive, massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon. You'll see those names scrolling across the screen right now. I seriously appreciate all of the extra support I get from everybody over on Patreon. It means the world to me. But of course, you guys just continuing to watch my channel also matters so very much to me. So thank you very much. I wanna give a couple special shout outs to my friends, Justice Curry, who let me film some of his figures like his Big Jim Tiger. And of course, Joe Amaro, who was kind enough to take my request uh, for me to commission him to make me a vintage Gigor figure. Uh, not only did I want that in my collection, but obviously I felt like that was an important piece to have for this video. So shout out to them. Thank you guys all so much. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Stay tuned. We're gonna have a lot more fun here on Toy Explosion and the Pixel Dan channel. Until next time, my friends.